Good morning, folks. You'll see the SDO satellite roll calibration in the solar field today. We're also going to see horrendous weather events, geological ones, and top science news. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was calm, but with a grimace. No sunspots or solar flares. Filaments are stabilized, but we've got coronal holes peppering the disk. Those with the Disaster Prediction app got their earthquake warning due to the coronal holes yesterday morning. The solar wind showed a bit of variability, but no readings outside of calm, normal, quiet range. Geomagnetism is quiet as well. The earthquake surged back on the west coast of Canada last night. This is not related to the snowmelt alert in play for the U.S. faults this summer. That alert must continue, by the way. Let's go to Italy, where the Stromboli volcano has erupted. Unfortunately, it killed a hiker trying to enjoy a nice trek. Here's the atmospheric production from afar. Up next, we're going to Lithuania. Drought has threatened to cut harvests in half. Not a good situation for a country's agricultural sector. Also, this happened. Some of the shots are like something out of a movie as a town in China is torn apart by the raging wind. Numerous deaths reported so far. A quick moment to look at the strongest storm on Earth. Hurricane in the East Pacific. All lows suck in at ground level, coming into the lower pressure. But where does the air go from there? Up. At cloud level, the vorticity creates a column, like a tube, and up at the jet stream, the flow expels, flowing back out from the center into the faster flows of the jet around it. Higher pressure does this, but in the opposite direction and in the opposite spin to the lows. It's the air circuit of the atmosphere. Check the scoreboard, literally. One of the first mid-latitude studies correlating geomagnetic fluctuations to anomalies in a European power grid. The first of its kind study overall on the Czech grid. The authors are conservative in their conclusions, but the correlations are pretty much as obvious as it gets. Want to drop a note and a link to a NASA video tracking fresh water showing both the data products and the data collection protocols in what is a very fun looking graphic. Up next, quasars or at least major X-ray cosmic objects. Today we are looking at Chandra's new catalog of lensed quasars and we are finding that there are an incredible number of examples of the phenomenon. Whatever the true cause and nature of the force we recognize as gravity, there is no doubt we do seem to see one object become many all over the cosmos when it's hiding directly behind another one. Folks, Real Climate Science blog by Tony Heller is one of my favorite climate change blogs and showing here NOAA data with the coldest first six months in the U.S. in recorded history just happened. Got it plotted in addition to the color graphic. Also, Dr. Roy Spencer, former NASA scientist, this morning doing a much better job explaining how the European heat wave came with the cold spell on the side of it than I did. You might recall I pointed it out in Turkey. This really shows the full extent of the antinode of the heat wave. It's just not what you're hearing about on the news. Last but not least, a story with a double whammy. First, an excellent confirmation of the concept that magnetic reversals come with ice ages. Important because we're in the middle of one. Here, one of the mechanisms includes the strengthening of the winter monsoon, but it's how that occurs that makes for the double whammy. Cosmic rays, surging under the weak magnetic field, blanket the sky in clouds, blocking sunlight and adding to the cold trend. Very happy to see them credit Svensmark as the one who opened that field of study, and if you missed yesterday's news, you don't know that Princeton's cloud cooling bombshell from 2018 was parlayed into proof that those same clouds control the climate, not CO2. And in a magnetic reversal, the cosmic ray cloud production overwhelms the biosphere by standing firm between us and our star. Folks, it's all coming together. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps, null school run, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.